In this video, I'm breaking down five animation tricks I use all the time in DaVinci Resolve. These are effects you can steal and apply to your own edits to make them even better. And I promise, by the end of this video, you have learned something and improved as a video editor. Let me not waste any more of your time and let's dive in. The first thing I'm going to teach you is how you can texturize your objects. And this makes your animations look 10 times more premium. So to start off with, you'll just connect a shape to a background. And I have chosen to do it with an ellipse. Then you'll just change the type from solid color to gradient to add some depth into it. Now you're just going to place the two handles like this. And when you have done that, you're just gonna make a dark version of a color and a light version of a color and i'm gonna do it with blue for this example the next thing we're gonna make is just an inner glow and an inner shadow and if you have the new core pack you can just use the inner shadow and the inner glow from that pack if you don't you can follow along and i'll show you how you create it manually we'll just start off by copying the ellipse and paste it as an instance by pressing ctrl shift v now you're just gonna grab a background and then connect it to the other background output to create a merge in between the next step is to invert the ellipse by right clicking on the invert and then we're gonna click d instance and then we're just gonna click invert now you're just gonna go into the merge and then change the operator from over to a top move the center to add some nice inner shading and now you can just add some gaussian blur to soften up the inner shading just turn up the blur to soften it up a bit and if you think it's a bit too harsh you can just turn down the blend in the merge and now we're gonna do the pretty much exact same thing we will just add a little bit of glow in the opposite corner so just copy the ellipse and paste it as an instance now just copy all the other notes and paste them and then you're just gonna make the background color white instead and then just place the center in the opposite corner and now we're just gonna add some effects that enhances the look even even more so we are just gonna start off by adding a glow and you can of course use whatever glow you want i will choose the new glow which is my own glow and the links in the description and then you're just gonna play around with the settings to make it look good and then for the final effect for this insane look you're just gonna place a grain and then just turn down the power and that's it next up we have the holographic effect you can use if you have a boring png you want to bring to life and i'll even show you how you can save this as a plugin so i'll just start off by adding the png i have which is a dollar bill then i'll just size it down by adding a transform and now we'll be adding the scan lines which is the effect that actually gives it that holographic look. And as you can see right now, the scan lines is white, but we are just going to change the composite mode from overlay to multiply. And now we're just going to drag up the frequency to get more so we get that awesome holographic look. And then you can play around with the line width to make the lines thicker or thinner, but I'll just leave it as it is. And now we can just add the waviness to make it wiggle a little bit. Then just decrease the strength to 0.8 and then increase the scale a little bit. And to get that pretty cool low frame rate look, we're just going to add a stop motion to it. And then we're just going to leave the frame repeat at 5 to get a frame rate of 12. Now you're just gonna add a glow of your choice and then you're just gonna play around with the settings to get the look that you want. And saving time is one of the most important things as a video editor. So now I'll show you how you can save this as a preset you can reuse over and over again. So start off by just marking all of these then right click choose macro and then choose create macro. Now just rename it to holographic and now we're just gonna choose the controls we can see in the control panel. And I want a control for the line frequency, the line width and on the waviness I want a control for the scale and the strength and I will rename it to wave waviness scale and the waviness strength and on the stop motion it would be awesome to have a control for the frame repeat and for the glow i would like a control for the intensity the radius and the spread and i'll just rename them all to glow and then the control so it'll be better organized and then we are just going to click on the three dots in the top right corner then click save as and now we're in the macros folder and then we'll just click on save and now you'll be able to find the holographic effect when you press and shift and space and type holographic and as you can see now we have all the controls that you want and it looks pretty good so let's jump on to the next effect now i'll show you how you can instantly add some flair to your animations with the light sweep so because davinci resolve doesn't have a built-in light sweep effect i built one and you can get that completely for free in the description by downloading the starter pack if you haven't already so once you have downloaded that press shift and space and type light sweep i have the paid version of the light sweep but you'll be able to do everything i do with the free version as well so i'll just turn down the soft edge so i can see where the edges meet here and i'll just turn down the width a little bit and move it a little bit over like this and turn up the soft edge again quite a bit so we get this pretty cool looking gradient look here and we can just add a little bit of flare to the edge by adding a glow and then if i click on glow only we can see the parts that are glowing and i want to remove the part here that's glowing because i don't want that to glow so i'll just drag up the low here until that's removed and i think this is good now we can just drag up the intensity a little bit the radius a little bit as well and the spread and now we get this pretty cool looking glowing edge and that's pretty much how you can use the light sweep if you have the paid version you can of course change the color of the edge and the middle as well if you want to which is a pretty nice option to have but yeah you can do a lot of stuff with the free version as well and now on to one of the most important parts of this video is how you can make actual smooth animation inside of davinci solve to start off everything we're just gonna add a transform for this example i'll just show you how you can do a slide animation but everything i teach you can use for size and angle and all that other stuff if you want to so what we'll do is just keyframe it at frame 30 go back to frame 
zero and just drag it out of the screen. But as you can see, this doesn't look smooth at all. But I'll show you how you can make it look smooth with different animation curves. So now we're just gonna go ahead and open the spline editor. And then we can see we just have this linear graph, which means the pace of the animation is the same all the way through. So when we're talking animation, we have three parts of animation. We have the in part, we have the intermediate part, and we have the X. And for all of these different parts, we have different curves. And right now I'm gonna show you all the different curves. So stick around and I'll show you everything. So as we can see, this is the in part because it slides onto the screen. So what you're gonna do is just highlight these keyframes then right click, choose ease, and then out cubic. And the reason why we choose out cubic is because for the in animation, we want it to go fast in the beginning and then slow in the end. Now, if we want to do an intermediate animation, if I go to frame 60 and move it to another part of the screen, and as you can see, this doesn't look as smooth at all because we have the same pace all the way through the animation. And as I said before, we have a completely different curve for the intermediate part. And the intermediate part just means when the object moves from one part of the screen to another part of the screen. Now we'll just mark the keyframes and then click on S on the keyboard. Then if I click on T, you can see we have something called ease in and ease out. If I just drag up the ease in then to around 55, and then I'll do the exact same for the ease out. As you can see, it goes slow in the beginning, fast in the middle, and then it goes slow again. And this is what we want for the intermediate part. So if I take a look at it, this looks pretty smooth. Then if we want to do the exit part, let's just go to frame 90 and drag it out of the screen like this. We will have to highlight this and then just right click and then go to ease in and then do in cubic instead. If I just zoom in, you can see it goes slow in the beginning and then it just speeds up over time. And this is pretty much how we do smooth animation inside of DaVinci Resolve. And last but definitely not least, I'll show you how you can do smooth and realistic bounce animations in DaVinci Resolve in a pretty cool way. So I've just added a transform, then I'm gonna right click on this size and then click modify with then choose anim curves and anim curves is just a type of animation that's based off the length of the clip and it scales up over time and we have a lot of cool controls when we get into the anim curves so if i just go into the modifiers we can see we have anim curves and as you can see the scale is five which is the size here and i want the size to be one so i'll just do one on the scale and then on the source here we will pretty much never use transition that's only if you are making transitions and custom we will not be using either that's if you are creating pretty advanced plugins instead. So I'll just do duration. Then for the animation curve, I'll just do easing. And that's here we can make it a bounce animation. So if we just do the time scale, I want it to be animated completely on a frame 100. I'll go to the time scale and then I'll just drag the time scale up until I can see it's its full size. And that happened now. Then if I go to the ease out, then we'll do elastic and we get this pretty smooth bounce animation. And that's how you create a bounce animation in the yourself and if you want to level up your animations and make them a lot quicker you can of course get the new core pack where we have the new anim if i just add that we have controls for the size if we want to do a size animation then we can change the animation length and this is on frames so it's fully animated on at frame 80 and then i can do elastic if i want to do a bounce animation or out cubic if i want to do a smooth hop in animation then we can of course do this on the position the angle the blend as well and we can add motion blur too and that's everything for today if you picked up something useful make sure to like and subscribe and hey if you gotta go to animation yourself i'd love to hear about it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one